All right, how's it going? So for the past two months, I've been doing just nonstop interviews to find my next role. Now, I haven't really actively tried to find a new job in like probably like five years since I graduated college. And this this interview process and hiring process have just been entirely, entirely different for, for a few reasons. So I graduated in December of 2017, and I was fortunate to join my first advertising agency in January of 2018. So it was, it was almost instant, right? I think I did maybe three to five interviews total. Uh, it, I just found it to be a really good fit, and then I accepted the job. Then when I moved over to my second agency, it wasn't like I was actively looking to to get out of my first agency. I just saw the job post. It was a good a good opportunity at the time. So I applied and within like two interviews, I, I got the job. But now with a few years of experience under my belt, uh, this process is just a complete 180 degrees from from those brief experiences. So first, I thought I'd talk about the social media industry a bit. I'm really pursuing a social media manager type of role right now because it's it's what I know best one and then I think as far as like marketing goes uh content strategy is just something that I'm the most passionate about it's something that I've I've really learned to love over the past couple of years but some of these job listings are just insane when it comes to social media most most positions are either like entry level, so like one year of experience, or they want like 10 plus years of experience in social media. And it's just crazy to me because like Instagram launched in 2010, like that's when they, it launched. And thinking about how much it's changed, like it's not even like a photo app anymore, it's a video app. It's just, and now Facebook is meta and Twitter is X and TikTok didn't even launch until like 2016. It's just, I don't know how you really expect to find someone with 10 plus years of experience in, in social media. That's like maybe less than 1% of the marketing workforce. It just like doesn't make sense to me why that would even be in there. But then just to take it a step further, some of those roles have the most insane just job descriptions because the social media industry is still so new. So for example, most applications are looking for someone with like, I'm like trying to find like five five years of experience, right? with the following criteria, a bachelor's degree, which would require someone to, on average, it's like four years, right, to to accomplish. So that's one thing. Experience in paid social ads. The average person probably doesn't understand like the back end dynamics of running social media ads, but all these platforms, they're all different. It's all a mess since Facebook switched to Meta, that was a complete like rebrand of the back end. It's just, it's just crazy. Twitter's completely different. Uh, Pinterest and, and LinkedIn, they're all, individual social platforms and their paid advertising is is different than each other then you also need to be a an seo expert and this is short for a uh, search engine optimization and in my opinion this is just a completely different sector of digital marketing that most companies are just kind of like lumping into social media because they're just unaware of of the depth of knowledge needed but um yeah that's just crazy uh I mean, there's an SEO specialist is an entirely like different role. Then you need multiple years of experience in copywriting, multiple years experience in photography and in video shooting, uh, multiple years experience in video editing, uh, experience in graphic design or at least Canva or uh, the Adobe suite. Um, then you need multiple years of experience in account management, uh, client communications, and then like on top of all that, they'll just list off all the platforms that they want you to handle and you need to have experience in all of these, right? So that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, and occasionally like Pinterest will be like thrown in there as well. And all of these platforms, I mean, they're all so different, you know, like it just doesn't make sense. They all have different algorithms. They all leverage different styles of content and you have to have unique strategies for each different platform. And it's just, it's a mess. But at the same time, like social media positions are typically undervalued in my opinion. Most companies aren't really willing to like put forth a decent budget for social media content because they don't understand how much really like work goes into it, into making good content. And I don't know, like everyone, 
has a younger sibling or a younger cousin who posts a few TikToks, does a few dance moves, and they think it's that easy, right? Like that's, that's all it takes. And sometimes in the past, I've been asked like, like, well, what do you do for work? And I'll say social media. And I swear to God, like the, the response I get more often than not is I can't believe that you get paid to be on social media all day. Like that's awesome. And which is a drastic, just oversimplification in my opinion, like obviously. And I'm just like, I don't know how to respond to it ever. So I'm just like, yeah, it's fun because I don't want to go into this like five minute long conversation about what it actually is, which I just explained right like i don't i don't want to do that every time i have a conversation with someone that just it's not needed but anyway so after you get a few years of experience under your belt the the next most important thing you can do is really to create a portfolio or website all people really want to do is is see your work you can talk all day about the engagement uh, or like follower growth but all people really want to see is the content that that you've done. You know, people are just visually stimulated, so they don't really care about statistics. A a lot of companies actually don't even look at really like analytics as as I've found. Um, Most people just care about the content that you're posting. They don't care if it's doing well or not. So you need to, you need to have a handful of of reels or campaigns, you know, like in, in your back pocket, ready to go during these interviews. And what the most frustrating thing about this is you need this portfolio, right? But nobody, nobody looks at your portfolio unless you directly put the link just like right in front of their face. Like I was talking to someone recently about applying for jobs and they were a few, like they're a few years older than me. So one of their main takeaways was it must be it must be so different looking for a job right now with the advancement of of AI. And it's so true. I mean, it's just, it's kind of crazy. A similar example is like dating, I think. Like, thankfully, I completely missed the the app dating movement. I've never been on like a, a social dating app. And it, if I would have, it would have been absolutely like horrible. I'm really bad at that stuff. I, I found this crazy stat that said like 53% of adults between ages 18 and 29 uh, have actually found someone to date like through an app or a site, but I've just never had to experience this movement. So like, it's just a brand new thing that my generation is just accepting and, and moving forward with. And in relation to, to hiring though, almost everyone uses AI to like siphon through resumes, which means the hiring game has just completely changed. It's kind of crazy to think about, but an actual human doesn't look at your resume until it's been through a pile of like 500 resumes, you know, like people just miss that step completely until it's down to a smaller filtered amount. And in order to get to this smaller amount, you need to fill your resume with as many keywords or buzzwords as possible in order to make it past this AI. Like my first time recently applying for for positions i was just i was applying for positions that i was like overqualified for and within minutes i'd get a rejection email and i was like how did this even how did somebody even look at my resume this fast like this doesn't even make sense you can't even go through my website this fast but then i started changing some of the words on my resume to the more social worthy buzzwords and i i made it through to some next steps you know like i started getting into the conversation where people were actually looking at my resume. But this is where I struggle a bit because half of the interviews I've been in, the hiring manager, they'll, they'll like ask for my portfolio, right? And I'm, it's like, it's in my resume. If you, you just, oh, just click a link, it's all you have to do. But they don't take the time to like even really look at it. Like they just are completely unfamiliar with my experience and they just let the AI do all of the heavy lifting, which is, is presumably taking out a lot of, qualified candidates in my opinion. And for me, this is especially evident in, in like remote jobs, for example, jobs that, that are listed as remote will have like three times the amount of candidates. So I just expect them to be using this AI to get through all of these, all these applications, which I understand, but it's just, you know, it's kind of lazy. Another thing I've noticed is the extensive amount of time that it really takes to go through this new process. For example, it takes it takes one week to like let's say get your resume looked at right the the ai the person's probably looking at what the ai filters through once a week then it'll take one week to schedule your first interview one week to schedule your second interview one week to do an assignment and then finally another week to to hear back on the status right 
like one job I applied for, I went through a total of five interviews. And after like weeks and weeks and weeks, I was finally told that they've been doing some reshuffling and they're going to wait to hire for this position until Q1 of 2024. And I was just like, fuck, you know, like this took, this took so much fucking time. God damn, you know, like what I wasted my time, right? I wasted a month and a half of just going through one process of one job compared to other positions that I've applied for the past. And it like, it's two interviews and then you got the job, you know, that's it. But I mean, I guess it's a good thing that a company is, is like putting more time and resources into their hiring process. It just takes so long, man. Like, I don't understand why it takes so long. Like for a person without a job, like five weeks is a long time to not have a paycheck. So thank God for freelance work. But like that is a long time to just be waiting and, and hoping to get this one job. Another weird thing about job postings is a large majority of companies don't list their salary range in their application. So then you have to have this awkward kind of like back and forth in the interview about salary expectations. When instead, if you just posted a small little range on the application, that would solve all of the problems, right? And I'm sure like less people would probably apply because they want a specific range and they know what they're looking for. It's just way smoother that way. And neither like you or the interviewer are caught off guard by, by any means. I mean, personally, I love when the interviewer starts off the interview explaining the salary range and confirming that that works for me. It's blunt, it's straightforward, it gets the awkward part of the conversation just over with fast and out of the way. And if it's a number that I'm like not comfortable with, neither of you have to like waste your time anymore. It's just like, all right, thanks. Like this was nice. Keep my resume on file if needed. This is amazing. I'm, I'm done if that's it. But otherwise I can like keep moving forward and we can have a conversation now that we're both on the same page. Something I'm like personally struggling with as well is interview attire, right? So since COVID, basically all interviews are now done virtual and done over something like Microsoft Teams or Zoom, right? So now I'm sitting in this room and typically with like a buttoned up shirt on, I have these lights shining on me. I look so unpresentable, but at the same time, I'm rocking like jeans from the waist down and I don't have shoes on. And for some reason, I feel really weird talking so formally without shoes on. I don't know if like, I, I just, it's a mental thing for me. I feel weird and I feel like someone's going to ask me to stand up and it would be bad if like I, I only had socks on for some reason. I don't know. But at the same time, I'm also like sweating my ass off. I can't turn on the AC in here or the fan because I'm using AirPods typically. And when I do, it sounds like I'm just like in a wind tunnel if I turn on any sort of air. So I have to keep my arms down like this the whole time because I'm just soaked, man. And plus, I'm already nervous, you know, like interviewing isn't a fun thing to do. And it, I'm just a mess. And it's it's horrible. I mean, I'm trying to gain weight right now for, for my wedding in a few months. And I'm probably losing two pounds of water weight with, with every interview. I don't know what to do. You know, one thing I am really surprised about, though, is that I haven't really been asked any like culture questions about what I do in my free time or things I'm personally interested outside of work. Being on the other side of interviews as the interviewer, to me, those are, they were just some of the most important questions, like equally as important as the job related questions. I worked with some weird fucks in my time and sitting next to someone that you don't like is just horrible it can ruin the whole dynamic of a small group all sitting in like a bullpen style. Honestly, there are, there are a few people that I have in mind that were just so odd. I'd just dread going into work, especially on like a Monday morning because I'd have to interact with, with them on a personal level about their weekend and hear about all the weird shit that they fucking did. Like it was just, it was odd. And I get along with most people, right? I try to be nice. I try to put in effort. I crack a few jokes. I respect boundaries as much as possible. But some people are just off. And if you don't detect that in an interview, you've got you've got a world of hurt coming your way. I think that's why I like, I like in-person interviews so much. Like you get a real sense of the person in front of you. 
you get a whole sense of like the office, the whole dynamic, what's going on, how people interact with each other a little bit just by walking in there. Plus, it's the only way if you know someone smells or not. Like this is this is a big thing about coming into the office. You don't want to sit next to a stinker, man. Like if you sit next to someone smelly, it's it's bad. It's 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 hard to get through the day. Honestly, though, I will say I am very grateful for this experience overall. It's teaching me patience. You know, that's always good. You really get the opportunity to reflect on the positives that you've accomplished in your in your career or all the just the crazy problems or fires that you've like worked through and managed through that you didn't think you'd get through at the time. It's not every day that you get to really like hype yourself up a little bit and show someone like what you've accomplished or what you're still hoping to do in the future. It's also an incredibly humbling experience, I'd say, uh, not getting an interview that like I, I, this, something that I'm like overqualified for not getting it. I'm like, what the hell, right? Like it really puts you in this place that makes you think, okay, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was and I can utilize this time to assess that and work on some qualities that that need some improvement for example i've been working a lot more on like editing in this time um script writing things like that um really looking more into the back end of a lot of different platforms looking into some ai uh, that allows you to like just cut up different content utilize cool things like that so that really enables me to to take this time and and progress but needless to say, I'm ready for this journey to come to a close very soon. So keep your fingers crossed for me, you know, knock on some wood or some shit and maybe I will land something soon. But that's all I've got for today. Thank you for listening and spending your time with me. I greatly appreciate it and I'll talk to you next week.